this job is the best job. And for this job, I gotta travel all the time. And this happens to me all the time. It happened when I came here. I had to go to the big TSA machine where like you put your hands at the top and they see like your tampons and stuff. <laughs> right, so I had to go through and the woman stops me. She goes, excuse me, miss, we have to stop you. Your butt set off the machine. <laughs> yeah, you guys know what that means. It means that this ass is a threat to Homeland Security, you guys. Look at it. Oh, no. It's so dangerous. Oh, it's coming right for you. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. If you look too deeply, you'll see your future. I just got a problem. Impatient people. Airports. Enough. What is going on at the airport? Could we put a dress code at the airport? It looks like a slumber party. Oh, yeah. Do people care what they look like anymore? They just come out now as is. They must roll out of bed. And then they're at United. What the... I'm not... I'm not into this. I'm not into casual. I like the 50s, 60s, people dressed up, right? I'm not into this whole casual. You meet these people, I'm comfortable. I don't care what people think of me, as long as I'm comfortable. Yeah? I'm uncomfortable that you're comfortable. Shower. I'm not into this, it's gotta stop. When you go to the airport, when you see the world, the world sees you. <laughs> and now what we do, we sit down in the plane, and now we look to see what catastrophe <laughs> that's gonna be sitting next to us for five hours. <laughs> right? I know. And it's never this. It's never these beautiful ladies. I could tell my guy. I could sense it, right? Like he gets on the plane, we make eye contact, like, oh, this is him. I was in Atlanta. I love it, Atlanta. I love the A. Yeah, y'all get crazy. Y'all strippers don't stop twerking. That's crazy. I love Atlanta, man. I was in the airport for five hours because they got two inches of snow and shut the whole city down. That shit was amazing to me, man. I, people left their cars on the highway. They saw two inches of snow and said, fuck this, and got out the car. We're walking. Come on, kids. That is not how you deal with snow. And they don't have snow all the time, so they're not walking confidently in snow. So it's a whole highway full of cartoon characters. <laughs> that is stupid. But I was in the airport acting a fool, man. I was, I was smacking people. <laughs> Y'all don't know what code is. Like, why you smack me? That's what Chicago wind feels like, bitch. And it... <laughs> turn up. I like to say turn up after things I do wrong. It's great. <laughs> I was. I met, this, I met this lady, though, man. I was waiting there about five hours, you know. And I, was, I walked up to her, and I was like, hey, um, Tanya, yeah, we've been waiting like four hours, man. You got any kind of updates, anything you could possibly tell us at all when we get out of here? Yo, she doesn't answer me at all. She jumps right on the intercom. Thank you for choosing Delta Airlines. This is Tanya. Now I know some of y'all got questions. I got questions too.
But right now, we ain't boarding the plane because we can't find the captain. I don't know. I don't see him, so I don't know. <laughs> so if you got any other questions, I'm gonna need you to be like Superman, lifting a Mustang and hold your horses. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why everybody's so mad about these two inches shutting the whole city down because I shut down every time I see two inches. You hear me, bitch? <laughs> And we are Facebook friends, because that was some gangster shit to say at your job. She was at work. Her manager, Todd, came out and was like, oh, excuse me, Tanya. Uh, yeah, Tanya, you can't say that on the intercom. And Tanya turned with no hesitation and was like, Todd, I've been working 16 hours every day for seven days straight, and I ain't got no goddamn bonus. I say whatever the fuck I want. And Todd was like, I'm gonna go on break, okay? I'm gonna, we're on break. I travel all the time, every week. I hate flying. I get very anxious when I fly. I'm not afraid of a crash. I'm afraid of a conversation. That's what I hate about flying. <laughs> I was on a plane the other day. The guy next to me was like, what do you do? And I was like, I mind my own business on airplanes. That's, um... <laughs> First of all, you're sitting too close together to have a conversation. The guy's trying to make eye contact. We're just staring at each other from this distance. <laughs> I'm like, I could kiss you without using a neck muscle. That's how close you are. I was on a plane the other day, the guy next to me was eating a lollipop. Don't you think that's an inappropriate airplane food? A lollipop? It's too noisy. He's like <laughs> I was like, sir, you're turning me on. Could you relax a little bit? They don't even sell lollipops at the airport. That's a from home lollipop. That guy got a lollipop. He's like, I'm gonna hold on to this until I fly. I wanna make sure I have that three inches from somebody's ear. I don't even know where you get a lollipop, by the way. Outside of a bank and a doctor's office, they don't sell them, do they? If you gave me $10 right now and you were like, go get me a lollipop, I would come back a week from now with my shirt torn and be like, I couldn't do it. I don't know. I hate everybody on every plane. We all hate each other though. That's not exclusive to me. We all hate each other. You know everyone hates each other on the airplane? Because as you're boarding the airplane, everyone just stares at you dead in the face, angrily. The whole flight's just... <laughs> That's the only time as a society we're not looking at our phone. Everyone's like, let's put our phones away and look upset at everybody else on this airplane. <laughs> I hate it, but I do it too. I'm just as guilty. As soon as I sit down, I'm like, look at this fucking idiot getting on the plane. <laughs> what? back there. It doesn't matter where you are on the plane. You feel better than everybody behind you, don't you? You could be in the second to last row. There's one guy behind you. are like, what a fucking idiot back there. <laughs> Embarrassing loser. <laughs> last row. I was on a plane the other day. I hated the guy behind me. He kept yawning out loud the whole flight. Am I a psycho or is that annoying? The whole flight is like, for like five hours. I wanted him to die, I swear to God. I was like, I hope this guy passes away on the flight. First of all, you don't need to make a noise when you yawn, that's a decision. He's deciding to do that. It's like if you were hungry on a plane, you were like, I'm hungry! You're like, you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm hungry. I like to let people know when I'm hungry. I think it's important for people to know that. People yawn out loud, they want attention. That's why they're doing it. They want you to be like, oh my God, are you tired? And they're like, I am. Here's my entire life story of how I came to be tired. Don't fall for it, it's a trap. Plus, isn't it fun to not ask somebody a question when they really want you to ask them a question? You ever do that when someone's like, I had a wild night last night, and then you're like, neat, and then you just walk away? That's like one of my favorite things to do. Just tell me your shitty story, don't make me ask for it. I flew recently, I was at the airport, LaGuardia Airport here in New York. That's my home airport. I was walking to the terminal. They were playing Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses at the airport. 
That's a weird airport song. I'm a rock and roll guy. I love Guns N' Roses. I'm cool, but it's a little much at the airport. I walk to the terminal. I just hear da 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 like, hey, can we cool it down a little bit? It's, it's 7.30 a.m. I'm, I'm eating a muffin, looking for an outlet. I don't think we need to rock this hard. And... Also, it's a little unnerving to be boarding a flight and hear, you're gonna die! I'm like, shit, am I? If they play knocking on heaven's door next, they're never flying again. <laughs> Take the bus. I actually flew in and out of Ronnie Reagan Airport this year on a propeller plane. It was like a Boeing 7. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real trick for me to get on, on a tiny plane like that. I have a horrible fear of flying. I get on the plane, I fasten my seatbelt, and I do not unbuckle it for the duration of the flight. Because if the plane is going to plummet six and a half miles out of the sky, that little strip of nylon might save my sorry ass. <laughs> I refuse to go to the bathroom on an airplane because if I'm gonna die in a cartwheeling ball of flames, it is not gonna be in a flying outhouse with my pants around my ankles. <laughs> Sit in my seat and read the emergency information card over and over. They can get rid of page three. That's the water landing section. <laughs> there is no useful information there. At the top, they show you how to use your seat bottom cushion as a flotation device. I don't want to present myself as a genius, but if I am drowning and something is floating, I will figure out how to operate it. Seat bottom cushions, suitcase, dead pilot. I will save myself. I will not need Leonardo DiCaprio to help me. Then they show you how to exit in the event of a water landing. I think we've seen exactly how likely they are to be able to land one of these puppies in the water. I'm pretty sure I'll be exiting as I land. But they got the picture, they got the man. <laughs> Jumping calmly out onto the escape slide. Always a man. There's a woman waiting patiently to go next. Always a woman. Because it's ladies first until the plane falls out of the sky. Fine sucks, dude. No one's cool. No one's stoked. No one's like, the airport, yes, y yeah, yes! <laughs> no one. Everyone's a grumpy dick. No one respects boundaries. Everyone's. I think it's the worst version of all of us. And here's an example I came up with that I think well illustrates how air travel makes us all temporarily the worst version of ourselves. Say we're all on a flight right now. Packed ass plane, on the runway, next in line to take off. And some super old guy on the plane, like 100 years old, dies and we have to go back to the gate. <laughs> all of us would be pissed, dude, all of us. So steamed about this poor old dead man. The, like never else in your life we'd be like, a guy died, fuck that guy! <laughs> on the plane, 200%, for sure. Even the most compassionate, empathetic person on that plane would be like, oh my God, somebody died. What happened? He was, he was 101? Where the fuck was he flying to? <laughs> I don't even let him on the plane. Are, is he gonna parachute into a cemetery on the way to... Okay, uh, sure. He could have died at home this morning or in the Uber on the way to the airport. He had to die on the runway. <laughs> yep, that guy's an old piece of shit, okay. I hope his kids have to deal with some red tape to get this corpse out of here. It's... Now, okay, whoever's sitting close to the dead guy, all right, <laughs> like whoever's sitting right next to the dead guy and rang their call button, they'd be like, hey, I think this guy's dead. <laughs> I'm gonna find him just like, mm, he is dead, we gotta go back to the game. <laughs> Everyone in earshot of that would be like, hey, <clears throat> way to go, dude. <laughs> you fucking choked, are you serious? 
You could pretend like he was sleeping to Ugato O'Hare. You had to ring your shit. Cool, man. Half this plane is connecting flights to see their alive families. Did you think about that? Of course you didn't, because you're selfish, dude. Grow up. Sit next to a dead guy for three hours. He's not going to do anything. Boost. He's not going to fuck with you, dude. He's dead. He's dead. We're good. No one dies and then their ghost stays on their flight. Like, that guy's gone, man. Fuck. Don't point at him. He died silently like a man. This is your fault. You ran your shit, dude. Are you going to ask the pilot if there's any homework, you fucking dork? Yeah. You're a dork, dude. Carry this dead guy out here. I'm trying to be more tolerant. You know, I'm trying... There's too many, everybody's got their own thing going on. It's a, it's a waste of time to not be open-minded and learn these things. I'm trying to be tolerant, but it's, it's difficult. That, that tolerance, it's tested routinely. I was on a flight going from Denver to Chicago, and halfway through my flight, midair, 35,000 feet, the guy sitting next to me starts eating pancakes out of a bag. Not like a Ziploc bag with like a little seal and like a, hey, I meant to do this vibe. Like a bag from the store. Not a store that sold pancakes. See what I'm saying? Like a Foot Locker bag. They get me, they're just loose. They're just loose in there. Like bingo balls, just loose. And there's nothing wrong with what he was doing, morally speaking. But you gotta realize that if you do some wackadoo shit, like eat pancakes out of a shoe store bag on an airplane, you're forcing strangers around you into a world of questions they never anticipated they would ever have to ask. First off, wh ha what? First off, all the questions, all of them. First off, every question. Why are you, why? How did you get to this point in your life? Where are you going? Because, like, there's, that's not, how do you wind up, if you're on an airplane, you're on there with purpose. You're fighting gravity to travel through the sky to land on another part of the Earth's crust. Nobody's, nobody's like waking up casually like Amelia Earhart, like, I think I'll take to the skies today. You have purpose. You have reason to fight nature, to go somewhere else. How do you have that purpose in your life, but still do it with hastily packed hobo snacks in your midst? That's not how you catch a plane. You're not like, is this one going southbound? Haven't seen Grapefruit Joe in a while. <laughs> Drop in, we'll share some beans. That's not how you catch a plane. I was hungover on a flight the other day. That's the worst. Oof, flight hungover. Oh, God, I hate flying. That's the only part of this job I hate. I like a train. Give me an Amtrak any day. No bag check, no security. It's almost like they've never heard of a terrorist. <laughs> I, I, uh. I hate flying. Flying is so high maintenance. Flying's like a high maintenance girl. Like, you want to get inside me? You got here an hour early, take your shoes off, and do a body scan. You're like, Jesus Christ, good Lord. Not a train. A train's like a drunk chick. Like, get a beer. Get in here! <laughs> no security on a train whatsoever. You can walk on a train with three suitcases full of cocaine. Like, hey, see something, say something. Choo-choo! <laughs> this is how sad and desperate trains are. Trains don't ask to see your ticket until the train has left the station, right? <laughs> They've already started moving, and then they ask, how much of a fuck could they really give? <laughs> Tickets, please. I don't have one. Well, you gotta buy one now. I don't have any money. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoy Newark. <laughs> All right, yeah. I just hate flying. They've ruined it. It's so nerve-wracking. Every flight's an anxiety attack, you know? Every time I have a flight, I feel like it's my first day of class all over again. I'm eight years old. I'm back at school, you know? You're on that plane, single-file line, book bag on, just trying to find your seat, you know? <laughs> then you finally get to your seat, peel a plot of snacks, and start farting, right? Yeah? <laughs> right? 
And the flight attendant, she's terrifying. She's like the teacher, you know? She's kind of hovering. She's nerve wracking You know, she scares you. you know, she walks by. You hide your phone, telling you're reading. <laughs> yeah. You know, she gives you a little lecture. Hey, seatbelt, seatbelt. You know, then the pilot, he's like the principal. He's up in his office, comes on a loudspeaker, you know? Right? You don't really want to meet him, but you know if you do, you're in trouble. Right? Yeah. Right? Right? And you're like, all right, I got to pee. You can't pee now. I'm 32 years old. It's not pee time. Sit down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Good Lord. Now you're pissed. Now you're just waiting it out. Oh, my God. Just like class. How much longer? How much longer? Jesus Christ. You're counting the minutes. Then the plane lands. The bell rings. You grab your stuff. You fight your way through the building. You find your mom. She drives you home. <laughs> oh, I done made it out here. We out of here. L.A. boy, let me tell you something. What's a privilege? For me to be shooting a special Comedy Central. Oh, I done made it. Huh? They done cut the check. Oh, I done made it. But one thing about it, though, I just can't forget where I'm from. I'm from the South. I'm a conservative black man. Just because I made it, that don't mean nothing. I ain't used to money. So when they cut me the check, I still find myself being cheap to me. Am I the only one? Have a pocket full of money, but you still seem to do the cheapest shit you could possibly do? Man, they cut me a check. They said, Mario, you got to get to L.A. I said, it ain't nothing. I went online and found the cheapest airline I could possibly find to get a round trip from Atlanta to L.A. to L.A. back to Atlanta. I went to spirit.com. Oh, y'all must have heard about it. I put the round trip on spirit. $42. I'm looking on the website like they must have fucked up, put the wrong shit on there. $42? Book it. But me being a cheap person I am, oh, I booked the ticket. But you know when you sacrifice quality for quantity, you go get your money worth. Oh, I booked the ticket, $42. Round trip. Atlanta to LA, LA to Atlanta. And you know you get a little cheap flight like that, in your mind you thinking, oh, I already done made it. I'm on my way to L.A. I'm going to show my ass. <laughs> so I'm at home packing my clothes. And if you on your way out of town to do some big stuff, you know you packing everything in your closet. <laughs> you packing stuff you ain't even wore in your own city yet. you like, you know what? I might wear it in L.A. <laughs> I'm telling my suitcase is so fat, I'm sitting on shit. I'm trying to press it in. I'm coming through the airport. I got my shades on. I'm already winning. What? I paid $42. I'm somebody. I'm coming through the airport scrolling. I get to the little spirit kiosk. The lady looked at me. She said, I see you checking the bag, sir. She was already on it. What thing about spirit? You're going to pay a little cheap $42 for that trip, but you better not check no bag. You hear me? That bag going to be $6,000. Check that bag. Check a bag. They waiting to see you come through there with a bag. I'm coming through there like, uh-huh, what's had that? She told me, I see you got a bag, sir. <laughs> Put it on the scale. Now, this is where they got me. Now, this is why I should have turned around. Put it on the scale. Spirit allow you $100 for 50 pounds. But it's $5 each additional pound after that. I put my bag on the scale. I said, good. Yeah. Now, you know your bag heavy when you got a, a little bit. The scale ain't nothing but this house, the flow. I, I, I put my, my bag on the scale, it was 84 pounds. She said, Mr. Tory, that'd be $100 for the first 55 dollars after that. So that'd be $270. I looked at her, I said, you mean for the whole bag or what's in the bag? What you trying to tell me, man? I'm, I'm confused here. She said, sir, if you want this bag to go to L.A., it's going to be $270. So I looked at her right in the face, and I did with any sensible person in here. I had a pocket full of money. I did with any sensible person in here would have did. Any grown person in here that got some sin. I went to the bathroom, <laughs> and I put all my shit on. You hear me? I had all my drawers on. I had long johns on. I had jogging pants over jeans. Short swimming trunks over shorts. I had all my shoes on, two pairs of shoes. I had, I had Timberlands and flip flops on, all my socks on. 
I had every pair of socks on, socks over my shoes. Every shirt I had, bun downs over V-necks. I had my toiletry bag around my hip like a little fanny pack. I came out the bathroom like a gingerbread man. I said, where the damn gates? You ain't fucking this up, I'm going to LA. Now when I got on the plane, I'm already walking like a gingerbread man. I'm hitting babies in the head. It was a old man soft spots on the head. I got to my seat, I sat down. And when I sat down, this is when I should have got off. I sat down, I looked around in the seat. I said, damn. I hit the little flight attendant button. Bleep, bleep. I said, ma'am, listen, uh, ain't no seat belts in this seat, ma'am. Don't you know this lady leaned over the seat, looked at me, she said, sir, you paid $42 for this round trip. Ain't no seat belts on here. You don't care about your life. Sit down, sir. That's why we call this spirit. You're going to pray up here. Sit down. <laughs> 